Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're building a Socket 370 retro gaming PC or more a test system. In the last few videos I've been doing some work with Socket A and obviously we need uh, a competitor. We need to compare how Socket A stacks up against the Intel competition. Now you've seen me use a Gigabyte motherboard with the VIA chipset in the recent video. However, a um, couple of games performed uh, not as uh, good as on the Intel platform and yeah it also feels a little bit um, wrong to use a wire chipset so today we're going with the um, stock standard Intel bread and butter chipset which is the 815 and this is an interesting motherboard it is from uh, a Dell computer from a Dell Dimension 4100 I believe and it's based on an Intel motherboard the D815EA and um, yeah it's lost a few features features um, it doesn't have the network connector it doesn't have the sound card and it also uses a proprietary uh, power connector here but you can get um, adapters for this um, so that's a way to get a cheap motherboard that is still fairly good and we will have a look at the bias options later so the processor we're going to use today is a Pentium 3 running at 500 megahertz it's got 100 megahertz front side bus and 256 kilobytes of level 2 cache with the Pentium 3s, the CPU die is exposed, so you got to be a little bit careful. And also with the thermal paste, we don't need a lot. Just a tiny amount is necessary, um, and it'll spread just fine. With the CPU cooler, I like to use um, this model here. I bought this from StarTech a few years ago, um, and it's got the wider bracket with three attachments for the for the hooks here that just helps it spread the load when mounting the CPU cooler installation is pretty straightforward you just put it on one side make sure it's um, attached and then you just snap in the other side it needs a bit of bit of strength but not, not too much there you go that's all ready to go we need some memory now the 815 chipset has a limitation with the RAM, only 512 megabytes, and that doesn't sound like a lot, but it's sufficient. We're using Windows XP Service Pack 1, and I haven't encountered any slowdown, uh, slowdowns with the games that we're using. And also, the in terms of what processors we can use up to 1, 1.1 gigahertz with the copper mine processors, and that's it. So basically, there's a limit as what games we can run anyway. So we're using two sticks of uh, SD RAM PC133 from Crucial with cache latency 2 and rated at 133 MHz. So two sticks for a total of 256 megabytes of memory. So you just install them like that and that's it. It's all ready to go. Next up, we've got the graphics card. We're using the same G-Cube ATR Radeon 9600 XT. Yes, one of you noticed it's got a fan with an NVIDIA sticker on there, so I will definitely change that. I've got an aftermarket cooler from China that's gonna, um, that I will install in the card, and I will likely do a video on it because it's a different type than the uh, CPU cooling fan video I did a while ago. And we also need a sound card going with the Sound Blaster g 2 ZS. Very good sound card. Highly recommend this for gaming. And we also need some storage. So I'm going for the hard drive. I'm going with a Seagate Barracuda 5, 120 gigabytes with an ID interface. And I'm also using an ID optical drive. Now, both are configured to master and I'm using separate ID cables. This one goes to the primary ID uh, channel. This one goes to the secondary ID channel. And to power all of this, I'm going with a Corsair power supply, the VS450. I've been using this actually for two years now and it never let me down with the retro computer. So, yep, that's the power supply I'm going with. And I'm using this with all my other builds as well so I can measure the power draw and have some really good comparisons. So that's all ready to go. Next, we're going to have a quick look at the BIOS. I'm going to flash the latest BIOS version, which you can still download from the 
Dell website. We're gonna install Windows, Service Pack, the driver, some benchmarks, and I'll just spend a bit of time talking about the software, how I install everything, and yeah, maybe we're gonna run a few benchmarks and some games as well. Okay guys, I've just turned on the computer and any moment we should have something on the screen and I'm just gonna tap the delete key to go into the BIOS. So let me just see if all the drives show up. Yep, wonderful. So at the top we can see Dell Dimension 4100. Um, so this is the OEM motherboard. We've got 512 megabytes of RAM. The date and time is already set. Boot configuration, all I had changed was uh, yes for plug and play. On the peripherals, I usually turn off the serial and parallel ports because I don't need them. Under ID configuration, there's nothing we have to change. Under the floppy disk, I don't have a floppy disk today, so uh, that's all disabled. Event log. So this is typical of an OEM board. They focus on things like asset management and logging events for uh, to have an easier support, easier time with supporting the products. Video configuration, again, there's nothing to change here. Under security, we don't, I don't need a password. And I might just double check the boot order that we're booting from the CD first and then from the hard drive. You can change the quiet boot option. If you turn that um, enable, you will get the Dell, the big Dell splash screen. Um, if you leave it disabled, you see the post messages and the quick boot. I think that just affects how long it takes for the RAM to for the RAM check to take. And here we can also change the ID drives around, and that's pretty much it. Now I have upgraded the latest BIOS. We are on version A11, and the way you uh, do this, you just download the latest BIOS file from the Dell website. You run it. Uh, you need a floppy drive, it creates a boot floppy, you boot off that floppy, you flash the BIOS and then you're done. So what we're going to do next is save the BIOS settings and we're going to boot off the CD and install Windows. Alrighty, here we can see the hard drive. Now I'm just going to delete the partition, so press D, press Enter, press L and then press Enter again and we're going to go with the quick format. It's going to quickly format the hard drive and then install the operating system. Now the version of Windows we are installing is the vanilla version of Windows XP Home. Uh, a big tip if you don't know about NLite, I can highly recommend it. I basically created myself uh, a custom disk that has all my settings, my network settings, my name, uh, the license key and everything and you really uh, at this point yeah uh, after you format the hard drive you can walk away do the dishes clean your house whatever um, and you come back and it'll be ready to install and uh, I install Windows so often it's a huge uh, time saver so can highly recommend it and later we will install service pack one um, simply because it addresses most of the bug fixes and it's still very lightweight so having a machine with 512 megabyte of RAM um, it's no deal uh, no big issue at all performance is just fine okay so here we are on the Windows desktop I'm gonna plug in my USB hard drive and we're gonna start installing some drivers and software unfortunately the motherboard does not have USB 2 so you gotta be a bit patient when copying stuff off the USB hard drive Okay, so it's time to install the service pack. This is the service pack one. Uh, it just fixes some of the most uh, prone errors and bugs, but yeah, beyond that, um, for gaming, I'm, I'm, not, I'm actually not sure yet if you, if you actually need any higher service packs, but that's something I will definitely want to look at in a future video. So far, all the benchmarks and a few games uh, that I've tried, they all work just fine. Okay, next up are the ATI video drivers. This is the Catalyst driver 5.2 and I like using them because they don't install the Catalyst uh, control center. That means you don't need the .NET framework. Um, yeah, so, so far I haven't had any issues with these drivers, so those are the ones I'm using. Now with the ATI drivers, after installing the drivers, uh, the uh, smart guard will perform some HEP tests and determine the uh, best settings and the screen will refresh, uh, refresh and then you get the full speed. So let's quickly have a look in the driver. Um, resolution that's all fine. Click on advanced and we should get the drivers and under smart guard 
we've got AGP 4X here. Yeah. Depending on uh, the chipset, a lot of non-Intel chipsets, uh, if they detect certain cards, will actually slow down to 2X or stay at 4X and you actually get some stability issues. So the only other thing I do is uh, turn off VSync for my benchmarking. Um, that's pretty straightforward and you've got to do the same thing with the OpenGL settings as well. But that's really the only thing we need to change in the video card drivers. Okay, next up are the Sound Blaster drivers. These are from the Sound Blaster website. You just download them and run them. Okay, with the Sound Blaster drivers, I do recommend you go into the audio console and there's one setting we need to change that is the CMMS mode and turn that off unless you're playing with headphones and you want that virtual surround sound. And we're also going to upgrade DirectX to the latest version 9.0c. And now we're just going to install some benchmarks and see what this machine can do. So in 3D Mark 2000 we're getting 3695. And for 3D Mark 2001 SE we're getting 4382. And here we have a look at CPU set. So we can see the Pentium 3 running at 500 MHz with 100 MHz frontside bus. Uh, here we can see the motherboard and it's funny, it actually doesn't seem to mention Dell anywhere. It just refers to the Intel motherboard. And we've got the latest A11 BIOS. The video card runs at HEP 4X. We've got the memory timings here, cache latency 2 running at a 1, 1 to 1 ratio, 512 megabytes. And uh, here we can see the SPD readings. And here's something about the graphics card, but I'm just gonna open uh, GPU set to have a bit more of a look of what the video card is all about. Now, the memory clocks are a little bit lower than the standard 9600 XT. Uh, I believe the stock standard one has a clock of 300 which is doubled, uh, which is effective 600, and this one has 250, which is effect effective 500. However, the with the processors we are going to use um, with this motherboard, we will usually be uh, limited by the processor anyway. And uh, so, what have we got here? 256 megabyte of RAM, DDR, 128-bit interface bus, 500 megahertz clock speed for the core and 500 megahertz effective clock speed for the memory and the manufacturer is G-Cube. So there you have it guys, that's the Socket 370 machine all done and dusted. It works very well uh, in terms of stability, that's what you get with Intel, Intel chipset, Intel CPU, uh, you get really awesome stability and compatibility. Now this will be my go-to benchmarking uh, rig going forward testing a bunch of socket 370 processors, Pentium 3, Celerons, 100 MHz FSB, 133 FSB and so on. And it's going to go ahead uh, against the socket A machine we, uh, we built recently. I put all the video links down below in the description if you want to check out those. And yeah, that's it guys. Uh, let me know if you have any questions or feedback about this build. Uh, quite interested with the chipset situation with socket 370, but I believe going with the 850, 815 chipset from Intel, that's a safe bet. It's a very uh, representative chipset for the socket 370. And that's it guys, thank you so much for watching and I shall see you soon with another video.